Hello Year 12 and welcome to the next lesson. Today we're going to be looking at this very important concept, the self-concept. You will hear this word used a lot in health and social care. So we're going to define what is meant by this word. We're going to describe the patterns of development of the self-concept and look at what can develop a positive and negative self-concept. Okay. Um, just a quick recap. This is a good slide that talks about what we looked at last lesson in terms of the different stages of play in childhood. Um, but this has got these images of the different blocks next to the different types of play, which I think can help you to remember um, how the play differs as a child gets older. So that's there for you. Okay, self-concept. What is self-concept? Well, if I said to you, what is the color orange? You might say the color orange is a mixture of two things. It's a mixture of the color red and the color yellow. In the same way, the self-concept is a mixture of two things. Those two things are self-image and self-esteem. Self-image is how we view ourselves based on other people's reaction to us. Okay, So it's kind of like how we think um, other people view us. Okay, so we might think, actually, um, other people consider us to be um, intelligent, funny, attractive, um, good company. If we think other people view us in this way, that could be like a positive self-image. Self-esteem is how highly we think about our abilities and ourself. So it's linked to our confidence. So these two terms are often confused. Self-image and self-esteem are different. You could have a, um, a strong positive self-image where you think others think positively of you, but in fact internally you might feel that you've got low confidence and that you don't actually match up to the image that you've made for other people. Okay, So these two things are different. Now the combination of these two things the sum total of the ways in which we think about ourselves is the self-concept. This Venn diagram can be used to help us remember this idea where self-esteem and self-image come together to make our self-concept. Okay, now a positive self-concept helps us in life, it helps us in the way that we behave and act with others and it can make us feel happier. Now, have a think at home, pause the video. What might influence the self-concept? Okay, here are some ideas. There are many more as well, but all of these things can help um, add towards your self-concept in a positive or in a negative way. Okay, now here is an individual where you can look at the phrases he has given here, the different quotes that he's got, and decide for yourself, does this person have a strong or weak self-concept? So you can see the person in the bottom corner of your screen now. No, not me, the other corner of the screen. Okay, and here are some of his quotes. My greatest pain in life is that I will never be able to see myself perform live. Okay, you can read some of these other quotes yourself. I found them quite humorous, so I just put them in here. Um, now, the point about self-concept is that it's very difficult to actually know for certain what someone's self-concept is unless you are that person yourself. You can give a guess towards someone's self-concept. You can look at these quotes and say, this person seems to have a very strong self-esteem because of these very bold quotes that he is giving here um, or it could be very low self-esteem because he feels that he has to compensate or make up for the fact that he has that low confidence okay um, the exam questions you will look at and we'll look at an example in a short while um, you have to look at someone's life circumstances and sometimes the question tells you a little bit about how the character is feeling um, so that you can then describe and explain what you think that person's self-concept will be like. Okay, we're going to look now 
at how someone's self-concept develops over their lifetime. As an infant, someone knows very limited information about themselves. They can respond to their name, maybe they are aware of their gender, okay? But beyond that, it's very limited. As they become a child and later on adolescent, okay, there's going to be a change in how they view themselves. As a young child, the physical description of themselves, how tall they are, what colour eyes and colour hair they have, will be very important. They'll know some of their interests, but as, as they get older, towards adolescence age, um, personality traits and the activities they enjoy become a more um, stronger part of the self-concept. Yes, an adolescent will still be very concerned with their appearance, that's certain, but equally, and maybe more, you have personality and activities the person enjoys taking over what can be considered um, to impact on their self-concept. Okay, so it's more to do with what they are interested in. Um, at the adult life stage, here self-concept can be considered in terms of what they do. So for me, that would be um, as a teacher and how good I'm doing at that. And then for an elderly person, their self-concept could be more backward looking, you know. So imagine me when I'm 70, I'll be looking back saying, oh yeah, I used to be a teacher. I used to teach those year 12s back in the day and the great time I had doing that. Yeah. So that would be an example of how self-concept would change over time. Okay. On your own, at home, have an attempt to answer these questions where you have to try to um, describe these different people's self-concept and self-image, etc. So have a go at that. Pause the video and do that now. Okay, here are the answers on the bottom. I'm going to move on now. Okay. Right, an exam question. Omar is a British-born Muslim who started primary school last September. His teachers are pleased with his progress as he can write his name and read simple stories. He loves playing football and running races, although other children do not choose him to be in their teams until last. This makes him feel sad. There are no other ethnic children in his class, although there are 10 children from minority ethnic groups in the whole school. CI. Explain how the experience of primary school may affect Omar's self-concept. You have six marks for this question. Okay, so the first thing you can do is define self-concept. Remember, it is the sum of self-esteem and self-image. The next thing is to remember that self-concept isn't only just a positive thing or a negative thing. And very often for these questions, you need to look at both sides of the coin, both aspects, okay? So let's have a look at the, the mark scheme here. Now, uh, remember that on the one hand, if we look at the, the answers over here, firstly, just to remind you, four marks are available for just one-sided view. So you need two sides of the view, or two views, to really get the four marks here. Um, he feels he's good at reading and writing because progress is praised. Yeah, the teachers are pleased with him and self-esteem is raised. So that's the positive aspect and you can go into detail into that. Um, the negative aspect of it, um, he feels perhaps that he's not so good at football and running because he's not chosen for the teams. Okay, so how he is considered by other people um, is not very good at football. So his self-image is decreasing. Okay. This, in turn, can affect his self-esteem. So here's some answers you could have put into your answer there. Um, you can look at that in your own time. Okay, that's it for this lesson. This is all about the self-concept. Hopefully now you can define what is meant by it. You can describe the patterns of development of the self-concept. And we began to hypothesize the effects of different factors on the development of positive and negative self-concepts. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.